Hey, how's it going? Gareth James here for mttpokerschool.com and today I'm going to look at a really interesting hand and question uh, that came through from uh, a couple of my MTT Game Changer program students. So the original hand was posted by Hattie and he gave his analysis of the hand um, before getting into a great discussion with another member, Lee. So here's the hand. Um, Hattie opens off around 40 bigs from the cutoff to 2.1x and the button 3 bets to around 3x his raise to 6x. Hattie calls. The flop comes 7 of spades, jack of spades, 9 of diamonds, giving Hattie a pair, a flush draw and a straight draw. A villain bets around half pot and Hattie calls. Um, the turn is the five of clubs and Hattie uh, decides to donk jam. Now, I recommended that Hattie could just get it in here on the flop given the SPR, which is about uh, 2.5. Uh, and, you know, the amount of equity that he has here with nine spades, eight of spades is, uh, is pretty good. Um, he's actually ahead of like two red aces, for example. And then uh, I also didn't think that donk jamming on the turn was going to be a thing, especially not with his hand. And yeah, I just don't think you're supposed to donk jam many hands there at all. And then at this point, um, because I'd said that you can just get it in with, um, you know, a hand with such strong equity and it's doing pretty well or very, very well against even over pairs. I had a question then from Lee and he said, how many big blinds would you be willing to get it in with? Because he had this assumption that getting it in for more than 30 bigs was too much with a combo draw. But I mean, our draw is very, very strong. You know, we have a pair, we have a flush draw, we have a straight draw. But yeah, I thought it was a great question because uh, yeah, while I'm fa fairly confident that you would play nine of spades, eight of spades here differently when you're deep, uh, I'm not so confident in knowing actually whether there are some hands that we can jam at say 100 bigs. So I fired up Pio Solver for the original spot and then ran the same spot but at 100 big blinds to see the differences. Now the first thing that comes to mind is that the SPR is going to be different when we're deeper and also the ranges are going to be different. So that's going to have an effect on the two strategies. Now, going into the analysis, uh, I think it's really important to have some very clear questions that you want the answer to. Otherwise, you can just spend hours and hours and hours going down various rabbit holes. So here are the three questions that I wanted to answer. Number one, are we ever jamming at 100 bigs, like check jamming in this spot? Number two, what hands should we do it with? And then number three, how do we play our combo draws specifically? So let's have a look. So we're going to start then with what our strategy should look like at 40 big blinds. Um, and as you can see, we'll just, uh, we'll just hover over nine spades, eight of spades. And you can see that it, you know, it does like uh, to jam here. Just a quick note, uh, obviously folding, calling, fairly straightforward. Uh, there's only one raise size here, which is to jam. Uh, no other raise size is going to make sense when the SPR is this small. And that's why there's only one raise size here. So yeah, so nine of spades, eight of spades. Uh, wants to just get it in, but you can see nine of hearts, eight of hearts, and nine of clubs, eight of clubs just wants to go ahead and call. Um, so there does seem to be quite a lot of jamming. You can see 19%. So let's have a look at some other hands that we can jam. We're going to jam uh, over pairs. Uh, we're going to jam uh, another combo draw, flush draw, and a gut shot. Uh, eight of spades, ten of spades. King of spades, ten of spades looks, um, looks good as well. Uh, interestingly, uh, diamonds, hearts, and clubs are getting jammed at some frequency as well. Uh, double gut shot uh, for those uh, for those hands. Let's have a look at some other ones of the draws. Uh, so here we, again, we've got a gut shot and a flush draw. So yeah, plenty of jamming going on with those hands. And then other hands that were jamming, uh, you can see bits of jamming with uh, Jack X here, Jack 10, Jack Jack 9, obviously two pair, uh, Jack 10 and Jack 8 wanting to jam as well. So a pair plus a gut shot. And then uh, let's have a look. Uh, nine's obviously a set. Seven's is a set as well. Let's have a look at some other uh, strong hands. Nine, seven is going to mix between jamming and calling. Uh, and then if we look at all the calling hands, it's going to be like nine X quite a lot of the time. But interestingly, look at that. King nine of hearts, king nine of clubs wants to start folding uh, some of the time. I guess we're going to, you know, start blocking some of his bluffs either you know, on this street or the next. And let's have a look here as well. 10-9 just wants to go ahead and find a call. And then we've got bottom pairs uh, that want to call as well. 8-7, eight, 8's uh, eight kind of like a third pair hand, very similar. Um, so yeah, pretty interesting to see. I mean, this is really weak hand here, like 7-6. 
we can start folding hearts and clubs, but we want to continue when we've got the back door flush draw. Uh, under pairs here, just going ahead and folding, and then most of these other hands will just be when we have uh, a flush draw. Uh, interestingly, another you know another hand we we looked at, um, ace of spades, eight of spades, has the gut shot and the flush draw, so you know quite a lot of equity. So uh, let's now look at 100 bigs and try to answer those, uh, those three questions from earlier. Okay, uh, so the first thing to note is that we now have a raise size that isn't all in. Uh, so uh, just to go through it, so the pot started at um, 2,000 chips and I wanted to keep uh, things consistent. So in the example uh, hand that Hattie posted, the flop bet size was half pot. So I wanted to keep that the same, I did run for other bet sizes, and interestingly enough, uh, half pot is not the size that's used in either situation. 30% tends to come out as a favorite. Uh, but here we go then versus half pot, we can actually start raising, you know, have a, a raising range and a jamming range. Uh, so the first question we wanted to look at, are we ever check jamming at 100 big? So what we're looking for is this dark red color here. And you can see that there are some combos that we want to jam and the ones that stand out can see jack nine top two pair wants to jam sometimes jack 10 so top pair and a gut shot wants to jam sometimes We've got a tiny bit of jamming with middle set and then quite a lot of jamming with you know a very very strong combo draw but there tends to be or it looks like there's more raising to the smaller size of 2800 than there is just going out and jamming uh, let's look at king eight of spades again you know gut shot flush draw uh, looks pretty strong but I think, yeah, I definitely think there's much less jamming going on as we would expect because it's a hundred big blinds. Why would we just like, you know, jam in the, re the remainder um, in this situation? But there is actually some so, some hands that we want to go ahead and, and jam. And you can see these hands here, A6 and A5 want to mix as well. So that's pretty interesting. That's the, the first question answered then that there are some hands that we want to check jam. We're going to mix between some pretty strong hands and some pretty strong draws. That also answers question two, what hands should we do it with? Uh, and then question three, how do we play our combo draws specifically? So for this, we're gonna fire up Range Explorer and we're going to go down here to combo draws and then click on strat. And yeah, we can just work it through. So uh, ace 10 of spades tends to just wanna raise, ace eight of spades wants to just go ahead and raise. Then we get these jams, king of spades, eight of spades, king of 10, sorry, king of spades, 10 of spades. Uh, King Queen of Spades wants to just go ahead and raise most of the time, a tiny bit of jamming though as well. Queen 10 of Spades wants to do everything, whether it's call, raise, or or jam. And then if we look at 8 6 suited, just wants to go ahead and, uh, and raise. I mean, this is hand really benefits from uh, getting folds in this spot. And then you can see these hands like 10 9 of Spades, 9 8 of Spades, 6 5 of Spades, definitely wanting to go ahead and just call now. So you know, this is the hand that we had in this spot, 9-8 of spades. And for 40 bigs in a three bet pot, we can just be quite comfortable getting it in. We just have a tremendous amount of equity. But 100 bigs, it wants to play the hand a little bit more passively, or a lot more passively, and just call and see a turn. So I think I've answered all three questions that we came into this exercise or this analysis with. Uh, as I said, I think it's really, really important to have those questions so that you don't end up down several rabbit holes and you spent four hours and you've not really learned anything. Uh, so yeah, pretty interesting to see. What can be a really useful exercise as well is to do an analysis across all the different hand strengths. Uh, so you can see that in Piosolver, you can literally go through and look at the strategy for each hand strength, like from the, the strongest hand to the weakest uh, and all the draws as well. So you can see, okay, straights, we could, we're doing this. Sets, we're, you know, we're raising nines and sevens and we're calling with jacks. Two pair, we're gonna call with nine seven suited and we're gonna mix between jamming and calling with, with jack nine suited. So yeah, pretty interesting to, uh, to see this. Uh, so what I've done is actually do a comparison just to sort of you know, help you out here, give you some, some ideas of what you could do where we've looked at what we do at 40 big blinds and what we do at 100 big blinds and so we can start to see if there are some real, real differences. So what you might find as you look at this table is some things that really uh, jump out. So for example, at 40 bigs, we don't have any under pairs. Um, so pocket tens was, is just gonna get jammed preflop. Um, but we do at 100 bigs, right? 
Um, similarly, we don't have aces at 100 bigs because we'd four bet, but at 40 bigs, we want to flat aces sometimes. That's why we're going to have some overpairs in the, or yeah, the overpair of aces in the 40 big blind response and where it says jam and uh, it doesn't appear in the 100 big blind response. So yeah, I'm not going to uh, run through every single comparison here. If you want to, you can pause the video and look at the table. And what I've also done here is just uh, highlighted the word jam just to see where where it pops up. And uh, so you can see actually, you know, there's there's probably quite a lot more jamming going on at 40 bigs as we as we saw earlier, but there is still some going on at 100 bigs. Okay, uh, so that's going to wrap things up there. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you uh, haven't subscribed already, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And uh, if you've got any comments or questions, then make sure you leave them below. This has been Gareth James for mttpokerschool.com. Signing off. Take care, guys, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.